how can we extract details like this using Lightroom. Let me show you how it's done and if you want to follow along, you can find a link to download this raw file in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So that's our raw file and as always we want to start with the basic adjustments before we can focus on the more advanced things. So let's expand the basic panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will lessen the contrast. This might seem a little counterintuitive since to extract details we want to push contrast. So why am I reducing it by changing the profile? Simply because I want to have more control over the contrast myself. And that's a great way to start this. Then we want to work on the white balance. Looking at this image you can see it's a rather warm scene and I want to make it even warmer by slightly bringing up the temperature introducing some more golden light. So something like this looks great to me. Now you might see the screen color cast. We could fix it playing around with the tint, but I much rather fix that later on with a little bit of color grading and some masking. So I'm not going to touch the tint in this case. Then I want to work on the exposure. This means I'm going to bring down the highlights and bringing down the highlights just helps to restore a little more detail in the brightest areas of the image. So especially that foreground that's super bright but reducing the highlights will reveal more of those grass blades. Okay, then I also want to bring up the blacks just so we don't have areas that are too dark. I'm only going to raise it a little bit to be safe from underexposure. At this point I want to add back a little bit of contrast overall and we can do that by stretching the histogram. You can see right now it's lying right here in the middle and we almost have no bright parts in this image. We can change that by simply bringing up the whites and this way we are stretching the histogram pushing it a little further to the right side. And of course we can also use the general contrast slider to improve it slightly. However, I would suggest not to do, not to go too crazy with this. Just add a little bit. Now, what we can do as well to improve overall contrast globally for this image is to use these sliders down below. We can bring up the clarity, which will affect the midtones contrast, and we can bring up dehaze, which tries to dehaze the image, obviously, but this also leads to more contrast. So I like using that slider in very subtle amounts. Also, I'm going to bring up the texture a bit just to add some more sharpness. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance. Wonderful. So that's the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see not that much has changed except for the white balance and a little, little bit more contrast. Now comes the point where I want to extract details from those awesome looking clouds in the sky. And because I only want to target a very certain area, I'm going to be using masking for that. We don't want to have too much details in the foreground because that would look way too chaotic and it just wouldn't look good. So we want to focus on the sky. Let's open up the masking panel and we can use a simple sky selection mask. We don't even need to change anything here for this image. Now we want to further work on the contrast or in other words, we want to make the darker areas darker and the brighter areas brighter. So we can start with a very simple thing, simply bringing up the contrast slider itself. This already helps a little bit, but you can see it's not doing that much. What really helps again, the dehaze and the clarity sliders. So let me bring up dehaze. As I push it quite a bit, you can see we are suddenly getting much more details in the sky. Obviously this is looking way, way, way too ugly. So we don't want to go too crazy with the dehaze all at once. So let's tone it down a notch. Let's bring it down to something like 10. Then I can also use clarity to again, just boost the midtones contrast. If I would bring up the clarity all the way, you can see again, this really helps extracting those details from the clouds, but this is way too much at once. So I'm going to tone it down once more. We can go a little higher than with the dehaze. So let's say something about 35 looks great. Wonderful. Now let me deactivate this single mask to show you the difference from before. Not much detail, quite a boring sky to after. 
much more dramatic, much more detail. And we can now continue using different masks in different sizes with different adjustments to further get out more detail. So how I'm approaching this is I'm going to use a linear gradient and just drag it over the sky like this, just over those clouds right here. And again, I'm starting with a little bit of extra contrast. And of course, we can also use these sliders to add contrast. So that means if I bring down the blacks, we can make the darker areas darker. And thus we are making the brighter clouds pop. Looks much, much better already. And I'm also going to add a little bit of clarity again. So I'm adding tiny increments with different masks on top of each other, stacking these clarity dehaze and contrast adjustments to get a clearer looking image. At this point, right there at the top, we can spot a very, very heavy green color cast. And that's where I want to target the white balance. So that means I'm going to slightly bring up the tint since we don't want to introduce greens, but we want to reduce them. So we need to increase the tint. Just a little bit should be enough for now. I want to continue with another linear gradient. Again, I'm targeting the sky, but this time I'm only targeting the very top like this. And again, I want to improve contrast. However, this time I'm solely targeting the very darkest parts. So again, I'm making use of that black slider and bring it down to something around minus 10. All right, this is looking much better already. Let me create one more linear gradient again with a different size, but still covering the sky like this. And in here, I want to bring down the overall exposure. This is not so much to get out details, but more to create some kind of vignetting effect and just making the sky look a little more dramatic. Let's rotate it a bit and maybe bring it up a notch, but that's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with the sky is looking now. Again, let me show you the difference these masks make. This was our image with just a bunch of base adjustments. And thanks to the masking, we have extracted so much more details, which makes the shot look much, much more interesting. Now, I don't really want to change the sky at this point anymore. I want to work on the foreground as well. So let me create a linear gradient and I want to target the very near foreground. What I don't like about this area is the lack of contrast. I want to improve that by bringing down the shadows all the way. And just like this, we are adding way more punch to this image. Okay, let me create one more sky selection mask. But of course, I don't want to target the sky. I want to target the foreground. So I'm clicking on that invert button and we have a perfect selection for the landscape. What I want to do in here is to also reduce the green color cast. So I'm again, make use of the tint slider and bring it up. All right, this looks much more neutral. And here we have the image after the masking adjustments. One more time, let me show you the difference from before to after. Wonderful. Now, since we quite heavily adjusted the sky, there is some visible noise in here. I'm going to be using the AI denoise feature of Lightroom later on, just so you know. But first, we want to do some color grading. There's not much going on in that regard, but I want to go into the color mixer and work on the saturation. This means I want to bring up yellow. I also want to bring up green because I like how the landscape in the foreground looks with these saturated colors. I'm also going to bring up the aqua tones, which will affect the sky. And let's also bring up blue. Perfect. And that's enough of the color mixer. One more thing I want to do is to go down into the calibration tab and just bring down the blue primary hue a notch and bring up the saturation here as well. All right, that's looking good. Now let's do the sharpening and the denoise, obviously. Actually, I wanna first do the AI denoise. So all I need to do in the details panel is to click on denoise. By the way, I should have done the AI denoise way earlier in the editing process, but I don't think it's that big of an issue. Just so you know, I'm not changing anything here. I'm setting the, around, the amount to around 50 and let's hit enhance. Looking much, much better. Now we can do the sharpening again in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down Alt key. 
So just like this, we can nicely target the landscape in the foreground. And let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Wonderful. And that's pretty much it for extracting those details using Lightroom. If you want to take this a step further, there are certain plugins where we can extract even more details. And I can show you one example, and that's even possible in Lightroom. So let me right click on this image and go to Edit In. And we want to use the Nick Collection plugin, which will introduce these effects to Lightroom. Here, I'm going to choose the Color Effects Pro 4. And let's hit Edit. By the way, this is not a paid endorsement. I've been using the Nick Collection plugin for years, and it's a really great tool for landscape editing, as you will see in a minute. So here we will get a bunch of different preset effects. What we want to use is the detail extractor. Right out of the gate, this effect is way too heavy, so we want to change that. First, we want to bring down the detail extractor. So this is our base image, and we can now dial it up step by step to see where we are finding a good spot. This, of course, is affecting the image globally, so the foreground will be changed as well. Now, I think this is looking pretty good. What I want to do is to add more contrast to give the image punch. Just like this, I think we need to drop down the details some more, but that's looking good. And we can compare to before by deactivating this checkbox right here. So again, a huge difference thanks to the Nick Collection plugin, but of course that's not necessary. That's just the cherry on top. We could also bring up the saturation a bit. And while we're at it, let me add another filter and I'm going to use the polarization effect, which will just help improve the colors. Let's bring up the strength and you can see how this will make the foreground pop. I do think I need to tone down the details just a little more but that's looking good. And all I'm doing now is to hit save and we're done. At this point, of course, we need to clean up the image from sensor spots and other things. I want to create a more minimalistic landscape scene, so let me do this in Photoshop. I'm going to right click on this image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. I'm going to duplicate the background layer by hitting Ctrl J to have a backup in case I mess something up. Then I'm using the spot healing brush and let's zoom in. And first I'm getting rid of all these sensor spots. Obviously these become more visible as we are extracting more and more detail. And I also want to get rid of that cow right here and this shadow. Still. I'm not quite happy since there are a few trees that are kind of distracting. So I'm going to use the generative fill of Photoshop to get rid of them as well. Let's start on the left side. I'm going to use the lesser tool and I'm going to create a very rough selection around that tree. Once this is done, hit on generative fill and hit generate. All right, I'm not sure what's going on in here, but we can fix it real quick. So let's merge these two layers. Use the spot healing brush and brush over this stretch thing. Done. And then we will have this tree on the right side. Again, I'm using generative fill. So let me create a very rough selection here. And again, hit generative fill and hit generate. That's looking much better than before. And I'm also going to get rid of this tree. Beautiful, and there we have it. This is the finished image. So I hope I was able to show you how to extract details using a bit of Lightroom. And if you have any questions about the editing, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.